Echo Juliet Uniform. Echo Juliet Uniform, Roger. What's the name there? Echo Juliet Uniform, Roger. What's the name there? And those Larry, Larry, Northwest Ohio. Very nice signal in Ohio. Roger, Larry in Ohio. And Larry, what radio are you running today, sir? Larry in Ohio. And Larry, what radio are you running today, sir? Running the ASU, DX10, DX10, just 100 watts, that's all, over. Yes, sir, well, the first 100 watts is the most important 100 watts, so that radio is achieving uh, its main goal there. Sounds really good. How long have you had that radio? Its main goal there sounds really good. How long have you had that radio? Oh, boy, I don't know. Uh, going on two years, I think. Uh, when they first came out, first came out in January, uh, I don't know if this year or last year, but uh, it's been a great one so far, over. Yes, yeah, sir, it looks good. I'm looking at it. Uh, actually, uh, one of the main things I use is a VU meter. I don't know if you know what that is. Uh, not uh, many things have actual VU meters anymore. They're mainly like lights, but this is an actual VU meter. Uh, and I spent uh, 50 years looking at VU meters in my broadcast career, and I can probably tell you where that meter uh, uh, needle is going uh, within uh, a nanosecond after it takes off just by the velocity of how that meter moves, you know. And uh, I can tell a dynamic range by looking at the VU meter and I've got your voice peaks set to zero. And uh, as you uh, increase your, um, uh, well actually as you uh, reduce your dynamic range, uh, the meter hangs more, if you know what I mean. It doesn't bounce, you know, because it's being, the audio is being uh, reduced, compressed, uh, and, uh, you know, it's like a normal speech would be a 10 dB dynamic range, so that meter would be flopping around, but as you, uh, as you c continue to uh, shrink the dynamic range, the meter ceases to uh, uh, swing as much, as said simplistically, and so I can tell that you're right now running at about uh, 3 dB dynamic range, which means that your average percent of peak modulation is uh, somewhere around 80 to 85 percent, Roger? Somewhere around 80 to 85 percent, Roger. Ah, oh, very good, very good. Yeah, I don't understand all that, but thank you for the report. Yeah, we uh, we've had this one. Uh, we got uh, when we bought it, we got the number serial number four, number four. So we've uh, had a long time and uh, sure enjoy it. Over. Yes, sir, and, and so you should, and if you would like to hear that radio in act action, uh, we are, like I said, we're recording now, have been, and if you want to hear your recording, if you go to YouTube and do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, followed by the word logbook on a YouTube search, that will take you to this recording. This will be cut number one in a series of 2200 QSO VLOG air check recordings, and I'll have it posted up by noon tomorrow, Roger. Right, recordings, and I'll have it posted up by noon tomorrow, Roger. Right, okay, Roger, that was Victor Kilo Victor, Roger. Yes, sir, KC9. VKV, Kilo Charlie 9, Victor, Kilo Victor, Roger. VKV, Kilo Charlie 9, Victor, Kilo Victor, Roger. Ah, Roger, very good. And on this end, Larry. Been listening to you a few minutes there, so uh, thanks for coming back to me and uh, giving me a report. Uh, like the radio, uh, a couple other up on the shelf here. One's a 7300, but uh, I still come back to the DX10, Roger. Yes, sir. Uh, well, you're keeping um, company with some mighty fine radios, uh, Roger, Roger. Company with some mighty fine radios, uh, Roger, Roger. Yeah, Roger. Yeah. Doing, uh, doing uh, great on this end, age 82, 82, uh, got my ticket back in uh, 1957, Roger. 
Roger. Now, Larry, let me just ask you, what's the main thing, what is the main thing that you've noticed to be different about amateur radio today as to uh, amateur radio when you first came aboard? As to uh, amateur radio when you first came aboard. Okay, well, uh, a lot of things have changed. There's a lot of modes over the years. And the main thing today, I cannot believe where the price, the price of H rates have went over. Oh, yeah, Larry, but now, you know, uh, let's face it, uh, I bought a, uh, uh, let's see, it was a uh, 70, um, 75 bird uh, in, um, well, in 1970 for $7,000, you know. <laughs> that radio would be, I mean, that, that car would be probably $70,000 today, right? That, that car would be probably $70,000 today, right? Yes, Roger, Roger. Went through many of them over the years, like I say, many modes, and uh, uh, like I say, this one's serial number four, and uh, we've just kind of settled in. Uh, the uh, the 7300 set here, but uh, it just uh, seems more like home with the DXM, Roger. Yes, sir. Now, I'm, I must tell you, Larry, that in my estimation, the 7300 has one of the finest transmitters uh, that has ever been made. It's uh, the limiter in that 7300 is just uh, just a perfect limiter. It's a stonewall limiter, and uh, you set that in that your peaks coming back are, are right on the nose every time with that 7300, Roger. Right on the nose every time with that 7300, Roger. Ah, Roger, Roger. Okay. I don't know, there's just something about the receiver, it doesn't quite fit me. I don't know why. It's all right, but uh, the receiver on the DX-10 uh, just seems like home. And, uh, I use the 7300 on and off, but uh, still stick with this one, over. Roger, Roger. Well, you know, uh, th there's an art to setting up a receiver. Uh, mainly, I've been, uh, you know, interested in transmitters. And that's what we've been doing for the last five years is the transmitter setups for folks who are assisting them in achieving the maximum capabilities of their transmitters. But uh, on receive, uh, we go to particular links to get the best uh, receiver audio possible. And part of that is achieving just the right RF gain in the front end that uh, it doesn't suck up between words. In other words, you have to adjust that RF gain to uh, where uh, when somebody ceases speaking, the noise level stays the same and doesn't uh, cum up in back of them. Uh, that way there is no compression, so there's no uh, uh, compromise in uh, the receiving. And that's what I found a little difficult about the 7300, is getting that gain set just just perfect to where there is no, you're just below the compression, uh, RF uh, compression level of the receiver, Roger. Compression, uh, RF uh, compression level of the receiver, Roger. Uh, Roger, Roger. Okay, okay, great on the RF gain. I have played with that a little. And, uh, well, we'll continue to keep the rig, uh, Everything I heard about them, they they say they sound great on transmit, Roger. Oh yes, sir. That's that's my forte with it. That's I've spent five years uh, setting those transmitters up, and I, I've just you know that's the only for a long time that was all I knew about that uh, 7300 was the uh, transmitter because that's uh, all I heard setting them up. You know, I didn't I didn't have one of my own, but my Elmer managed to uh, get me one. He said, "You uh, you need to check this out." So he got me a 7300, which I used for about um, you know, three months or so mainly in the receive mode, comparing it with my other uh, receiver, that my main receiver, and uh, I've just found that, uh, you know, uh, just overall great radio, I think. Roger? You know, uh, just overall great radio, I think. Roger? Okay, yeah, Roger receive, Roger. Well, we're not going to get rid of it. We'll keep playing with it. All right. Any other hints for receive besides uh, using the RF gain? Over. 
Uh, yes, uh, don't use the noise blank and don't n use uh, noise reduction. Uh, they, they're decom detrimental to the actual audio uh, received, so do not use uh, uh, the noise blank or the noise reduction. Uh, your uh, preamp should be uh, that number one mode or, or no preamp. It should be uh, no preamp and then adjust your RF level to where uh, you have no signal uh, coming up on that RF, uh, you know, uh, the meter. Uh, you just adjust it just below it's showing there and you'll be right. A lot of times what I do is uh, I tie my uh, RF uh, level control and my AF level control together and you move them as one control. Roger, Roger. Roger, Roger. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's different. That's different. Okay, that's the thought. I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, for the price, uh, really, I paid a little more for mine when they first came out. You know, 7300s were a little cheaper, but they're kind of a higher price now. But uh, we'll still keep playing with it, over. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And and thank thank goodness that you know you have managed to uh, to keep up with the tariff. In other words, your your work has given you a certain amount of reward to be able to afford uh, the the nicer radios, Roger. Afford uh, the the nicer radios, Roger. Yeah, Roger. Yeah, like I say, many years on the air, many modes, and. Uh, we just, uh, at 82 here, we settled on single sideband and uh, just enjoy talking to people. It's a lot of fun, Roger. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and I've got a little secret that you might try, and that is uh, to leave your uh, ALC meter out. Uh, so you can look at your ALC meter as you speak your QSOs for something to do you, to occupy your eyes. And the challenge is to keep that ALC meter in the sweet spot by voice control. And uh, so as you look at your meter and you're, as you're speaking, you're, you're making your voice control that meter to keep it right in the sweet spot. And a little bit of practice over a couple of weeks and you'll be amazed how, how you can just keep that meter right in the sweet spot, right here? How, how you can just keep that meter right in the sweet spot, right here? Oh, okay, yeah, Roger on the ALC. Very good, very good. Yeah, boy, I guess uh, there's a lot of people that uh, sure enjoy the 7300. They, they sure sold a bunch of them, Roger. Oh, yes, sir, it is the radio of the century. Uh, you can say what you want about the other radios, but that 7300 outsells them uh, all. And, uh, and will... Uh, for the foreseeable future, it's just they're having just unbelievable problems keeping the 7300 in stock, Roger. Unbelievable problems keeping the 7300 in stock, Roger. Oh, okay. Still uh, very, uh, very wanted, I guess I would say. Very good uh, market for them there. Okay. All right. Thanks for your advice there. And uh, we, uh, we sure are going to hang on to the 7300. Yeah. Yeah, my age is something to try, and easy to put two of them on the desk, uh, Roger. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, let me jump out of here, Larry. Uh, 73 to you, sir. I've enjoyed it, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, hope that uh, you get to uh, check out your audio uh, by uh, going to YouTube and doing that uh, search for KC9VKV logbook, and uh, that will uh, bring up this recording, and we'll have it uploaded by noon tomorrow. So, 73, uh, Larry, and we'll catch you later, sir. By noon tomorrow. So, 73, uh, Larry, and we'll catch you later, sir. Roger, roger. We'll have a look tomorrow. It's been my pleasure. And I, and thank you for all your advice there, and uh, we'll keep playing with the old 7300 there. BKV, KDJU, have a great one. Yes, sir, Larry. 73, sir. And with that, I see by the clock on the wall there's a dead fly. Ooh, so we got to get out of here. We have uh, enjoyed it. Hopefully you have also. And uh, if you have participated, want to hear your audio, if you go to YouTube and do the call letter search, 
KC9VKV, followed by the word logbook. That will take you uh, to this recording, be cut number one, in a series of 2200 QSO V-Log air check recordings, and we'll have it uploaded by noon tomorrow. So with that, uh, we'll be returning this frequency back, back, back to normal amateur radio use. This is Kilo Charlie 9, Victor, Kilo Victor, clear.